Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, we'd like to talk to you about why we think the United States of America is a particularly good investment prospect over the medium term. Um, I'm going to start by outlining a few of the key sectors in the US economy, and uh, then Callum and Liam are going to move on to analyzing some of the more quantitative data, quantitative data uh, around the prospects uh, for the US market. And then I will try and conclude by drawing some comparisons between investing in the US and with other economies throughout the world. So I'll hand over to Callum now uh, for his analysis. Thanks, James. Um, so firstly, GDP growth. Uh, looking back in time first um, over the trends, um, there hasn't actually been much of a direct trend. Um, there has been positive growth since the crisis in 2008. I um, had a little dip, as I'm, as I'm sure you guys have seen as well, around the Eurozone time, so down to zero growth, I was only temporary. Um, the recent figures that have come out, um, they're released quarterly. Uh, the annualised rate was 4.2% for quarter two. Um, that was released on the 28th of August, which was the day before your birthday, Spencer, so I'm sure you remember that one. Um, and that seems ridiculously high, I'm sure you can also see 4.2% for the US seems massive. Um, it's actually because in the first quarter we saw minus 2.1%, and that was because the US, the US had ridiculously bad weather throughout the first quarter. Um, so, for a little stat and idea for you all, um, on the 7th of January, every single state reported at some point on that day that they had sub-zero temperatures, which was the first time ever for the US. Uh, looking forwards, the, um, the Fed have actually forecast that over the medium term, growth is going to increase, so I'll go this way for you, increase and then gradually deplete up to 2.2%. So we're going to rise around to about 3%, decrease up to 2.2% um, in the longer term. So medium term, fantastic. Longer term, probably get out, which James will get onto in a, few, in a bit. Um, secondly, inflation. Uh, over the past, inflation's dropped down a bit. Um, again, since earlier, earlier of the um, last quarter, sorry. Decreased um, output, decreased prices. Uh, the figure came out on the 19th of last month, which is the day before my birthday. So I want you all to remember that. Uh, and it was at 1.9%, uh, that's CPI. So the Fed looking forward has actually set the target at 2%, but that's PCE, as we saw over the last couple of days. If you change that to CPI, which is the one we all know, it's around 2.3%, so the target's 2.3%. So the long-term forecast is they're going to grow very steadily up to this 2.3% from where they are at the moment at 1.9%. Um, so main point for me, GDP, medium-term, great. Long-term, not so great. Um, inflation, very stable, up towards their target over the longer term. Now, Callum, Liam will tell you about this. Uh, so I did have a beautiful graph, but unfortunately I'm going to have to do it in a power cut here. But every four to six years, the USA experiences a slowdown in its economy. So by that, I don't mean a recession, I mean a slowdown. Um, and with their unemployment being a lagging indicator, lags behind that growth or lack of. So the current unemployment rate at the moment is 6.1% in the USA. Uh, if we look back about four years, the peak of 2010 in the Euro crisis, that's that, that it was then at 10.8%, so a huge decrease from about 1.2% 1, 1 a year. Prior to 2010, um, it fluctuated between 4 and 6%. Its long term average in the USA is around 5%, so we're getting to that mark about now. Uh, in terms of forecasting unemployment, you generally base forecasts on past trends. So. As Callum mentioned about GDP continuing to rise over the medium term, the next three to five years, we should see unemployment to essentially do the inverse and see and decrease over the next three to five years. Now, moving on to exchange rates. Unfortunately, I don't actually have the current, I did have the current exchange rates up on the board, but I don't have them in my head, but I think it's around 1.2 to the pound or 1.6 to the euro, or it could be the other way around. But I, yeah, so is it, I did, that's, that's right, is it? Yeah, okay, good. So, Close question, I think it was. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, it, should, it might come as a surprise, but the dollar has largely stayed flat against both of these currencies in, over the past five years, including the crisis. It's only fluctuated a lot uh, in the last 18 months. Uh, that's largely due to the pound with the Scottish referendum and the EU referendum, which will come in the next couple of years. And with the euro being in a deflationary crisis at the moment, we're seeing the euro uh, depreciate quite significantly. Uh, in terms of forecasting uh, exchange rates, so exchange rates tend to be one of the more volatile classes and one of the harder uh, things to forecast. But I am typically quite bullish for the dollar against both the euro and the pound in that respect. So I think different to Alvin there in terms of the euro. But I think over the next three to five years, the 
ECB will continue to have those negative deposit rates in the bank. And uh, there is a lot of other problems in terms of youth unemployment, especially in Spain and so on. Uh, so, yeah, overall, in terms of FX exchange rates, uh, bullish the dollar. So, after we've uh, heard a lot about the quantitative aspects, I'm going to bring it together and draw some comparisons between the US and other potential markets we could be investing in. As Liam's mentioned, we've got significant political risk at the moment, both with the referendum on Scottish independence and through the uh, UK, uh, UK's membership to the European Union, which could, could cause significant volatility going forward. We've also got the deflationary uh, pressures in the European Union at the moment. And thirdly, we've got an interesting one where if we compare the US to emerging markets, we can see that from the World Bank, uh, the World Bank's sort of um, world predictions for GDP growth going forward, developed economies are set to contribute around 50% to world GDP growth in 2015 and 16, as opposed to under 40 before. So um, as the US economy is the largest uh, developed economy, we see this as playing a key role. So to sum up, uh, by way of conclusion, we've got relatively good looking data uh, in terms of other world economies and indeed uh, relative stability in comparison to others. So we'd now like to open the floor and hopefully you can propose us some questions. Uh, we would like to ask you what you think uh, that we were right about in our prediction for a strong medium term growth in the US and what perhaps we were wrong about. I'm sure Antonio will be able to tell us everything. <laughs> um, please go ahead. So, non-economic 